Hi and welcome, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Kapono Siari. I'm executive director of the nonprofit What School Could Be, and thanks for joining us on this big thing. Jennifer, it is amazing having you. Is this the first one we've hosted together? Yeah, it is indeed. Very excited so, to be here. I would like to then introduce my good friend, educational partner, co author uh, of the book Landscape Model of Learning, Jennifer D. Klein. Uh, what school could be coach and uh, founder and was it president of uh, Principled Learning Strategies? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Very excited Excellent. to be here. Yeah. Well, so, so today we're, we're talking about um, student change makers. And I think uh, if, if you joined us last time on our last big think uh, for the second half, we were able to have some students from Wyoming join us, which was quite amazing. This is a pretty original big think in that our all of our guests are students. Yep. Tell exactly. us a little bit about what we're in for. So this is a pretty this this is a spin-off basically of something that you and I wrote about in the landscape model, which this is this idea of looking at students as those central protagonists of their own learning experience. And we had some really important conversations at what school could be about the power not only of listening to other adults talk about education, but of actually listening to students as well, hearing their voices, their views, their ideas about what's working in school and what's not and the kinds of powerful learning experiences that they have. Um, so today we're going to be talking to students from four different schools, um, from the Frankfurt International School, the American International School of Budapest, the American School of Doha, and the Munich International School, um, all of whom have been involved in developing change maker conferences um, to inspire solutionary thinking across all four of their schools and beyond. Amazing. Can't wait to hear about it. Me too. Should we bring them on? <laughs> yes, let's bring them on. All right. And here we go. It is truly exciting to get to have this opportunity to hear from so many different students about the experiences you, you've had. Um, we're going to start with Frankfurt International School because I know that the seed of this idea of the Change Maker Conference um, begins with uh, work, working with your assistant head of school um, and others, I'm sure, on your campuses. Um, that would be Mike Johnston, for those of you who know him and the work that he's done in various schools around the world. Um, I would love to hear from our two students from Frankfurt International School first, just to talk a little bit about how all of this started and what the intention was as it the idea or the, the fire began to spread. Who'd like to start? Maxi? I can take us in? off, yes. Um, yeah, so the idea, hello, first of all, to introduce myself, my name is Maxi and I'm a, a senior at Frankfurt International School. And I have been involved with the change makers um, since they began in 2020. And um, the idea started off as a student leadership program to foster student leadership. But the idea has always been to work to um, the solutionary approach and looking at how we can create a change in the world and have a positive impact. So then within a year of starting this program, we quickly decided to rename ourselves um, to the change makers and um, then started working towards our change maker conferences where we hosted one first only for um, our own school um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and then one from 300 participants around the world where we educated everyone about their power um, in change making and inspired some students, faculty, parents, everyone within these different school communities to show them how they can have a positive impact in their community. And since then, this has grown and we are now passing on this um, conference to other schools and are looking forward to the exciting development of these projects. Thank you so much, Maxi. That was a great introduction. And Vama, you want to jump in as well? Uh, share with us a little bit about, for those who are watching who might not know what we mean when we so easily use the term solutionaries, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about what that means to you and what that's meant in terms of the Changemaker Conference? Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, also, to first introduce myself, my name is Vama, and I'm an 11th grader here at Frankfurt International School. So when we use the word solutionary, change maker, um, so the word solutionary, like as Maxi said, we've kind of coined it as the phrase change maker. And we don't really like to give that word a very specific definition. Um, it is 
kind of what the name implies, someone who wants to make a change, who wants to make an impact. And um, we'd like to stress that this isn't dependent on your age, where you live, et cetera, um, what kind of um, job you have. It can be anyone, so a student and or a teacher or basically anyone. And we want to really emphasize the student part of that. And so one of the biggest things that we like to do in creating and appointing these change makers is giving people a reason to be a change maker by having them ask themselves why. So many people are passionate about a certain um, topic, whether it be climate change, gender equality, et cetera. And I think the biggest idea for us in change makers is having people ask the question why they care about that, why they want to have an impact and using these questions and this to build a dedication and as a result have an impact. And I think that this was one of the most um, impactful ideas behind our conference because we share this idea with others. And I think this is our basis for inspiring others to make change. I love this. So how how do those questions show up in in the in the conference itself? How are you it, when when you all of this started at Frankfurt International School? How were you? bringing those questions to light and getting students engaged uh, in in thinking about what mattered to them and how they wanted to do something about it? Either one of you, <laughs> both of you. I think, sorry, let me see. Um, I think one, of, uh, one of the things that we have, for example, is um, we like to create something that we call the change-making toolbox. Mm -hmm. So at our conference, we had various workshops and what and which taught skills that could be helped, um, that could help an individual create change. And those were taught by workshops, which um, were run by people who had experience in change making to share their ideas. And so these tools would be, for example, we have something called the root cause tree. And um, the root cause tree was about this question why, going deeper into the ideas behind um, a problem or to craft a solution. And so this is just one of the ideas of how we've tried to um, create the idea of why and help students understand that. I, I would love to follow up, Jennifer, if you don't mind. Please. Um, maybe this is this is a question that might bridge what Vama and Maxi just shared to, to maybe some of the other students answering for us or sharing with us, answering for us, sharing with us. Um, I actually have, a, it's, it's a genuine curiosity. So I teach in a master's of education program. And last night was one of our sessions with, uh, with 20 students who are teachers themselves, right? So they're, they're master's candidates in graduate school. They're also already teaching in the classroom. And this was from one of the teachers who um, is trying to do something similar. Um, she has an advocacy project. So advocating for some kind of change. And this is from her as a student for her program, right? Like it is her advocacy, but part of her advocacy is getting uh, her students to come and take part in this. And one of the discussions we were having last night uh, in class was um, that it can seem difficult to motivate others, specifically at different points in your life when you're busy with lots of things, like for example, high school, uh, to come out and do things that are for the good of the planet, for the good of fellow humans that are not for a grade, that's not for money, that's not for friend hangout time. And we talked about all these different ways to motivate students to come out, um, high school students to come out and do stuff. And at the end, I think our, our where we landed on was maybe we're not giving human beings and specifically high school students enough credit for having um, an, an internal flame uh, to wanna do this stuff. And that people actually do show up and they want to do this. So let's let's say that teacher was sitting here, and I'm sorry this is so long-winded. It's just because it's it's real, it's real and it's relevant. And I was just asked it yesterday. Um, how do you guys get people to participate and see and take action on the caring? Because I do have a lot of hope in all of humanity. I think everybody cares at some at some level. But how do you motivate people to take action on that caring? Show up and do something and put the time in. So I maybe from somebody, we, oh yeah, go ahead, Maxie, and then um, maybe somebody else afterwards. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I was going to say what you were mentioning with the internal fire. I think that is key. Um, in order to really be uh, behind the cause, there needs to be a sort of passion 
within the individual. So um, what we were focusing on at uh, Franklin International School is um, showing um, everyone in our community that whatever you are passionate about, it can most likely relate to making a change and having a positive impact because we um, often see that when people think about change making, they um, have the stereotype that it's only about nature and green energy, um, maybe eat vegan food or something like that. Yes, this is a part, this is an aspect of change making. This is one way to be sustainable, but there are so many aspects, whether it's in the business world, in science, or in the environment that can relate to having this positive impact and making a change. And we believe that you just need to find that passion and then you can really, with a drive, determine, be determined and make a change within that field. So it doesn't need to be within this uh, one narrow field, but change making, the great thing about change making is that it stretches across such a variety of fields that we believe any, anyone can find something that they're interested in. Very nice. Now I know from last week, oh yeah, Aris, please jump in. Yeah, so um, really I just want to add on to what um, Maxi said. It's obviously crucial that people are able to follow what they are passionate about in terms of how they will make change, how they will go about that. And I think another really uh, important matter to keep in mind when encouraging people, when getting people to really take the steps that are needed to, to make this change is to actually show them that they can make a change and that it's not all just um going toward like the culmination of their efforts is going to be uh, a grade it's going to be uh some sort of reward because there is so much more that stretches out to their community they and i think by having the change maker conference be a primarily uh student run sort of affair where you have people seeing their peers who have accomplished so many um amazing things in their community when you allow people to see that they can place themselves in the shoes of the change makers. They can see that, yes, I can be a change maker too. And I think that's really um, one of the things that makes this sort of format stand out over something like um, a workshop where you have like uh, university educated experts lecturing you. Like it, it has that authenticity uh, of like being of change, being able to come from anyone. And I think that's a massive aspect to to motivating individuals to to become change makers. Great, thank you, Aris. Alina, and then Somin. Um, so one way we we are now doing the Solutionary Summit, kind of this ongoing from the Change Maker Conference, um, and one tool that we teach there is the Base Ten Perspective, which essentially means that when you come across a problem it might seem so overwhelming and kind of to find a solution would take so long and so much effort and you don't feel like you have the motivation to do that but the base 10 perspective essentially means that you need to begin small because your actions will affect so many people for example if you go to we have 300 people coming to the solutionary summit perhaps each person tells another 10 people, then 3,000 people have already been effective, uh, affected through these 300 um, initial people, which shows how things can grow exponentially with only one small action. And I think that's also a way to show people that um, even if you just take a small step, you can make a lot of difference, which kind of boosts that inner flame. Excellent. I love that, Alina. And I think you're very right. Um, we've got a comment here from Mark Lang that we are so, cute, so used to driving kids to compliance that we don't give them credit for wanting to accomplish something when they're given the chance to do that, um, to do what's important and authentic for them. And I think what you all are talking about is a, is a pretty direct response to that, that point. Um, so many you want to jump in and, and respond a bit more in terms of what this look, has looked like at the American International School of Budapest? Yeah, sure. I'd love to. Um, for us in the American International School of Budapest, we've empathized, uh, empathized with a lot of the points being said by, by Max and Alina, and we decided to 
really highlight the idea of storytelling. Because for us, we find a lot of gaps between bridging the micro to the macro in a lot of our generation in terms of change making. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we have to make the things that we do tangible to the students first, that this tangible change in our local level eventually adds to the international level above our community. And for us, what we thought of was the best way was sharing stories of not only our struggles and our solutions, but other people's micro stories as well. And I think Mishi would have some points on that as well, of how we use storytelling to, you know, basically restart a mini change breakers conference as well. And how we directly connect to the students rather than like a giant system or ideal that, you know, the students uh, usually get from teachers or big organizations. So before we do that, actually, uh, Capono's question launched us into a whole group dialogue, which is wonderful. And I want to make sure that each of you is able to share a tiny bit about the story of your particular school. So, so I mean, would, would, would you also introduce yourself? Um, and then uh, let's also hear from your friend here, uh, from Mishi, about what, how, what, how has that storytelling element been core as you all have developed your programming uh, in Budapest? Yeah, so my name is So Min. I am a junior in the American International School of Budapest. I am a club leader uh, of the Changemakers Club in AISB, and I have been the conference chair of our most recent uh, middle school AISB Changemakers Conference. And I guess I'll just start Mishi off with how we actually got to where we were. Um, how we got to the Changemakers Club is directly off of the FIS Changemakers Conference. Um, I forgot who, I think Vama talked about the root cause tree and uh, our club was a direct product of the root cause tree. Um, Mishi and I and some other Changemakers uh, members, we all kind of got down to the FIS Changemakers conference and during a big brainstorm session, we decided to target some problems that we've faced in our day-to-day -day lives in the school. And what I think what all boiled down to was that there's a lack of connection and a lack of understanding of how our actions directly affect our futures and the global community. And with that, we decided to create a club to share stories and expand that out throughout the system in our school. Excellent. So Mishi, introduce yourself, please, and tell us a little more. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mishi. I'm from uh, ASB as well. I'm also a junior. And just to add on to, to Soman and, and Maxim's point, um, I would also like to say how the storytelling aspect also plays into empowering students, as we really want everyone to feel that they can be a change maker, which I think starts with allowing people to be inspired um, by others. But also, I think, um, because that inspiration can then spark passion within students but in a way it's also the school's um responsibility to let that flame flourish and create avenues for students to um actually enact that change that they envisioned and not have all of these procedures of going through multiple teachers and the principal and then the director and have 50 million meetings before actually getting there um, and, and having that action, uh, I think is very, very important. And we want to also create such a system uh, here at AISB. Um, and that is also why we created the, the conference itself for middle schoolers um, to show them that, yes, the school is behind you and we want you to feel that support and whatever ideas you have come come forward and, and we'll make it happen. Uh, and we want to spread that word through um, storytelling as well, which is also why through the Changemakers Club that we launched after returning from FIS, we um, want to launch a, a podcast as well um, with our school and and continue this journey um, by spreading the word um, and showing stories that people might otherwise not see. I love that point too, that idea of 
when you were talking about allowing it to flourish, right? Taking that spark and not putting it out because of all the obstacles that we can create in any system, right? But we certainly have them in schools. I think that's a really important call to action for the educators who might be watching today, um, that everything we can do to reduce the obstacles for students to really allow those passions to flourish and to turn into something bigger um, is, is a good thing, right? That, that part of our job, I think, probably as educators is to try to remove some of those obstacles that might be in the way, as you were saying, like the million meetings that have to be done and the million forms that might need to be filled in before we can inspire people to get excited about uh, creating change. Thank you both. So let's hear a little bit also then from, um, from the Munich International School. Um, from, let's see, who do we have here? We have uh, Alina and um, sorry, I'm like looking at the, uh, we have Alina, I think you're speaking for, <laughs> for Munich. Tell us a little bit about how this took light, took, took off in your school. Um, I know that from the blog, you talked a bit about this idea of amplifying passions. Um, but of course, introduce yourself first. So hello, my name is Alina. I go into, uh, I'm in eighth grade right now. And um, at MIS, we are currently organizing the Solutionary Summit. So like I said, kind of the ongoing um, second year of the Changemaker Conference. And how it all started was 10 Changemakers out of um, MIS signed up to go to the Changemaker Conference uh, last year. And we went there and it was kind of also reducing the obstacles to be able to go there. We, we could go there and we were like immediately inspired and everyone wanted um, to take action after it. And then we were proposed with the idea that we will, can start a, a own solutionary summit for the upcoming year. And that's how we're all involved right now. I'm in charge of the workshops. So right now I'm trying to get about 50 workshops um, on the road. And will those workshops be run by students, by experts? Yes, all? <laughs> who, yeah, who do you so, imagine? So there's a mix of um, students at MIS, students that are coming from the visiting schools, and uh, parents, just generally a lot of pe like a diverse group of people who want to inspire others and spread the, their story. Love it. Thank you so much for that, Alina. Um, and then let's hear from Aris and Jasmine about how this took shape at the uh, American School of Doha. I know from your blog, you mentioned specifically that you were seeing some pretty serious um, post-COVID disengagement. So I, I would love to hear how that feeds into this explosion of opportunities. Um, hello, I'm Jasmine. I'm oh, yes, from introduce America. yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm Jasmine and I'm from the American School of Doha. Um, so yes, when we were we planned a change maker conference um, earlier this year uh, for to be um, a way to invite students and um, people from around our in our um, community in Doha. Uh, to come up with ways to um, advocate for the things that they believe for and um, learn ways to create change in our community. And it was a bit disappointing. There were not as many people as they signed up for, but it's still, we learned a lot from it and we are planning a new conference, um, maybe for MISAC, which is a, when many um, sports and different arts come up together from the region. And we hope to allow them to advocate for change as well. And that was the main reason why we wanted to make this conference. Um, and we were inspired by FIS when we went there um, last year. Love it. Well, and I think Capono and I can attest that even if you have only five people in the room, if you impact those five people, it's still a win, right? Doesn't have to be huge numbers. It's kind of connected to that idea that small small changes do make a difference too. Aris, jump in, tell us more. 
definitely. So uh, I forgot to introduce myself formally last time I spoke. So uh, I'm, hello everyone, I'm Aris. Uh, I'm a, a junior at the American School of Doha. And yeah, um, essentially like what we saw again was that essentially the numbers that like came to the conference, obviously they weren't as high as we expected in that. Like uh, like Jasmine said, like, um, was just, was definitely a, a hurdle. However, um, I think it was also like an excellent uh, learning opportunity because we got to actually assess our strengths, our priorities as a change maker team. Um, we got to reevaluate them as well and really just like see where we wanted to go. But I think from the moment again that we like got people um like started to rekindle that engagement that um again COVID had largely had largely diminished due to like the lack of people's ability to come together and um really work on these sorts of projects i think that was um the most important first step and now where we'll uh take the conference and uh what we'll do with it in the future really will just be a building block off of that like first experience, we'll use what um, went wrong to to turn it around and really make sure that we have the the largest impact possible. So um, that's that's more or less how how it's gone for us. But we're we're optimistic about the future. Excellent. Well, I'm glad to hear the optimism. And I think your last comment, um, Eris, really signals perfectly a question that was asked by most likely to succeed in Hawaii. Um, how do you collectively evaluate your process and outcomes after a change maker conference is over um, as you're beginning to or before planning for the next one uh, gets started? Um, and this is a question for anyone who would like to try to respond. Um, thinking of Eris, you just signaled this, right? Learn from what happened in the past. Love to hear a little bit more about systems that you all have built. And and specifically, what are some of the things that you've learned by doing these conferences that are allowing you to make them better each time? Uh, Vama. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, thank you for your question, Josh. Um, we were actually, Max and I, we were just in a meeting discussing this with um, another school leader. And so one of the biggest ideas when we are moving from conference to conference, especially um, since it's not always the same school running it as we want to create a wider program, I think one of the biggest ideas that we want to continue on is the core aspect of the conference, which, as we stated before, is merely helping each individual find out why they want to do it and keeping the idea of motivation, passion, and these sort of things at the core. So um, we've had, we've, we want to work further by having discussions with the leaders sharing our experiences and using them to help um, the new leaders. And as well as sh um, both on the organizational side and as well on the motivational side. So um, I think that's mainly how we are planning to bridge between the different schools. Love that, great answer. Who, would, who else would like to jump in? Some of the things you've learned, Mishi. Yeah, well, well, I think to evaluate um, the outcomes and and the, the the success of conferences, I think it's it's very interesting to see um, what people do after the conference. And and here at AISB, after a middle school conference, we saw a bunch of students come forward from middle school, um, trying to create clubs and and to be more um, environmentally sustainable, which for us was sort of a direct indicator of what we actually could instill in students and that um, what we did was sort of working. Um, and then also during the planning process, um, I sort of, this is more personal, but I had to come to a realization that my definition of teamwork might not have been like complete in a way, mm -hmm. because for me, teamwork uh, was more of a concept of everyone working together and chipping in on, on everything. But I had to come to a realization during our multiple meetings and planning uh, the conference was that teamwork um, is more dividing tasks and identifying people's strengths and then delegating those tasks, um, which then work together um, to uh, a, a 
like a shared goal, which I think is very, very important as we could not have planned and, and executed the conference so successfully if we all got overwhelmed by the multitude of tasks that we had to all do, but by actually understanding what people are good at and then delegating um, some tasks um, to those who are who are experts in those fields and can work well um, in those fields really, really helped um, the planning process and it sped it up, it made it more efficient and we'll definitely try to incorporate more of that um, in the future planning of um, any conference at, uh, at AISB. Love that, love that. That's, yeah, and that's a really important insight into how these things work. Um, Alina, what were some of the things that you all learned? Um, so I ha we have not like led a conference yet, mm -hmm. but I've just been inspired that um, perhaps after the conference, we send everyone a feedback questionnaire um, that they can fill out and um, uh, write what they plan uh, and what they have learned, which they can take on to make their change after the conference so that they do not go kind of maybe forgetting after a while, but um, then actually taking on what they have learned. Great. Well, and I know that it sounds to now like maybe two or more of the schools have a middle school conference as well. Um, and I know that Frankfurt International now has middle schoolers running their own conference for elementary school students because we had them on just last week. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear more from all of you about how you're spreading this. You know, what what's what's your role as these things open up and, and more more elements of your school or more parts of your school want to get involved? Maxi. Yes, yeah, so what um, we felt as we were developing our program is that it's important to get the younger students involved as well um, in order to provide them with, um, firstly, authentic opportunities to lead so they are able to develop leadership skills that which they can then utilize for organizing conferences on a larger scale and also through planting the seed of um, desiring a positive impact at an early age so it can then grow and develop with the students and they are able to develop um, their ideas at a younger age. So for example, if I am in sixth grade and I have an idea of a diff um, of a change I wanna make, why do I have to wait to be in ninth grade in order to make this change? So then that's where we look at building this momentum in younger grade levels. And then, um, so this can then carry on into the upper grade levels and then hopefully lead to a continuous development of leaders. And that's how this idea of having a conference organized by younger students for even younger students came mm -hmm. across. I love that. And, I, you know, how how old do you have to be to have an idea about how something could be better? Right. Yep. So, um, so our conference, it's, we have um, six to eighth graders and they ran it for fourth to fifth and fifth graders. So, yeah, yeah starting at a young age. Excellent. Well, and then the next phase. Much. Oops, sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, when I remember when I was in fourth and fifth grade, we were not talking about these things and not having these opportunities to make a change. So it's definitely a move in the right direction. Yeah, I love that. Well, and I would, I'd say maybe the next phase is kindergartners and up, right? Because um, even yeah. even three, four, and five year olds have ideas about how to make their world a little bit better. They just need much shorter workshops. Capono. <laughs> I, I just have a really simple question. Uh, what do you imagine becomes the world when kids are going through this from kindergarten? What is, do you have a vision for that? What is it? What does that world look like? You're pretty close to it, right? A kid comes up with this from kindergarten through, uh, through high school. That's a great, what are you question. hoping for the world? Um, I can answer. Does anyone yeah, else want to answer? Or, okay. Um, I think it's basically what we're trying to seek is that, everyone can believe in themselves and can learn to have the opportunities available um, to lead and then can look at where can I have a positive impact within the world. So I think these words positive impact, I think that's really the key. That's what change making is all about. It doesn't matter where or when, but that's what we all um, aim to do in order to ensure a sustainable future. But in, yeah, Jasmine. Um, I think that this is also important for like if everybody started to realize that they could make a change in this world, then just imagine how much better the world could be. We would start to realize so many things 
or we would start to question things. And that's part of the way that humanity or people could grow. And a word like that would be a lot <laughs> better, I think, in many ways. Yeah, I agree with you, Jasmine. Does anybody else want to jump in? Jump in on that one? Yeah, Mishi. And then Somin. I would also like to add on to Maxim and and say that I think the world would also be sort of less selfish in a way, as I think many times many projects are um, just fueled by by personal gain. And I think if students do go through this whole journey, maybe even from kindergarten all the way to graduation, I think they will really realize that there are way more factors involved than they might initially think um, just by any project. I think the Compass, for example, really um, lets this visualize, lets us visualize these connections, um, for example, drawing from the, from the toolbox. And I think if students can understand that, then they won't just think, oh, what I get from it, but what the environment gets from it, what other people get from it, what other cultures get from it. And I think those will lead to more comprehensive uh, solutions that will hopefully be more long lasting and sustainable. Oh, that's great. Absolutely great. Um, so Min, you had something you wanted to jump in with as well? Yeah, well, directly adding on to Mishi's point, I feel like we'll take a lot of agency of what we do. And in taking that agency, I think we get to change a lot of the systemic things um, in our current world that really hold us back into making great change for the community. And I feel like a lot of the linear processes that we have will turn very cyclical. And in doing that, I guess, I think it just gives us the power to challenge authority. And like Jasmine said, just be able to think clear and act clear after it instead of you know, actually walking the walk and not just talking the talk. Ah, that's a great response. Capona, you looked like you wanted to jump in as well. I just wanted to elevate what Mel just said in the chat, that y'all should be advising large organizations, including schools on projects and initiatives. Uh, I totally agree with her there. Um, and uh, Josh earlier had asked if this work is formally connected to the work of the Wild and Institute for uh, Humane Education. Is that solutionary work? Are any of you actually uh, connecting with uh, Zoe Wild, the book she wrote on solutionaries and the Institute on Humane Education, or is this a separate initiative in all of your schools? Silence equals separate. Yes. <laughs> I I saw it referenced in the blog. Yeah, no, definitely yeah. worth asking the question. I I had uh, framed it and I saw in the blog that at least one of the schools has done a little bit of work with the Institute for Humane Education. Mm -hmm. um, so for any of our viewers who are not familiar, um, we've got a, a important, ah, there you go. Thank you, Mike. Um, we've got the Munich International School is working with Zoe Weil directly. Um, she has done some events for what school could be in the past. Um, her uh, uh, book, The World Becomes What We Teach, um, has been around for a bit and has had a, a wonderful impact, I think, on, on education. So good to see that there's been a connection. I'd also love to elevate, just so that the students see it, the chat, the comment that was made by Janelle Field. Um, uh, uh, so appreciative of the theme I keep hearing. Do you care about the change and why do you want to make an impact? Um, great internal fires being shared. It is at the core. This goes so beyond compliance. Uh, you know, this leads me toward, uh, thank you for the comment, Janelle, and it leads me toward a question that's been burning as I've been sitting here. As as I read through the blog, I know, and, and maybe we can make sure that we share that blog um, uh, address if Mel, if you're able to, to pull that up for us. Um, the, I think one of the questions that this raises is how much of this kind of change making active agency, you know, go after the things that matter to you. Do you see showing up, and I don't want this to turn into a critique of your schools necessarily, because that's not what we're here for, but how much is that showing up in your day-to-day -day classes? How much is that showing up in the broader culture of your schools? Or are there times when you do have to just sort of be a more compliant learner and times when you get to kind of burst out of that, those limits? Again, not intended as a school bashing session. Just want to kind of get a feel for how much of this gets into the, the broader fabric of your schools. Um, Aris, and then Maxi, and then Vama. So um, 
I definitely think that there have been uh, significant efforts, like over the past years, especially uh, when it comes to bringing this sort of mindset of um, uh, communal, I guess, betterment uh, into the classroom, bringing that into our day-to-day -day education system. So, for example, um, I think about two years ago, we uh, we got a new class in our school uh, regarding like how we can make an impact, learning how to use the uh, design process for the benefit of the community. There have been uh, other initiatives in terms of clubs that are always running with uh, with students, uh, heading them, that are working on like taking that step um, like beyond the academic and really going in the direction of um, like changing people's mindsets but i mean that's really uh what it comes down to um it definitely is the case that like as i think in in many schools i can't speak for all but in many schools i think it's just becoming a, a trend slowly that people are realizing that in order to really fundamentally change the the systems you have to alter those who operate them so in that sense, by working on, uh, by shifting their focus from um, just learn things because you have to, to learn things so you can make a difference, learn things so you can apply them. Um, I think going in that direction, following that mindset is what I have seen our school do, and I'm sure many other schools as well. And that's the, the crucial, that's the crux of the issue, getting people to understand how to make a difference. Love that. Yeah, that's great. And I, I agree with you completely. Maxi. Yeah. So um, Frankfurt International School is an IB school. So we um, complete the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program in years 11 and 12. So this is what the um, curriculum is building up to in the prior years. And I think that um, how change making and sustainability is embedded in the curriculum, the amount has certainly been increasing over the last years. And I think this is also connected to the International Baccalaureate changing the curriculum of some of its classes to adopt sustainability into the curriculum in courses such as economics or business management, um, making students critically think about the links of their work to sustainability. Oh, that's a great point. And, and so when you're in a school that has that kind of a curriculum, um, the curriculum is naturally, and I remember references to the CAS programming, um, for example, being naturally wedded to the kinds of, of learning that we're describing here. Um, Vama and then Alina. Uh, yes, um, to sort of add on to what Max said, um, the idea about curriculum and having things embedded in the curriculum, I think moving forward, it shouldn't be to one thing that um, all schools educators should work on is kind of embedding these things into the curriculum, not only at the IB level, but also before that. Because for example, at our school, we have discussions ongoing about providing support in the early years. Um, for example, one of our um, our other campus in Wiesbaden, we had a, they have an entire day dedicated to which they can do projects of their choosing and actually our change maker conference for our lower grades four and five was a result of this um, day where they where students can plan whatever they want to so having areas um, in the curriculum part where it's encouraged for kids not to just be um, in compliance with what they're being told to learn having these environments in which this is encouraged I think this should be a goal leading up um, goal for embedding into the curriculum and then which can by extension be used in um, the IB, for example, in your CAS project um, and in CAS in general, and just having a way to build on that. Yeah, absolutely. In other words, that it's all students who have access to this, that it starts as early as we can, right? Um, and that we're looking for those natural intersections between the content or skills that a course might be trying to teach and the real things going on in the world around us, right? Um, love that. Um, and thank you for sharing that uh, blog there, JT. Appreciate the the mention there of the, the link so that folks can go and take a look uh, at the blog if you're interested. Alina, jump back in. Um, what were you thinking about in terms of this? Um, so Vama said that it's important to support um, children in the earlier, younger years. And um, 
at MIS, we have services action in the middle school years, um, which kind of um, is you get put in, you, you choose a sustainable development goal that you want to work on and make, uh, like contribute to make change on. And um, last year, I chose the quality education um, sustainable development goal. And uh, for it, I wrote a book with four friends. And what really helped with the, was the support of our school. The book is called Speaking from Experience, uh, which might seem kind of ironic, but for us, like adults haven't been through social media pressures or homeschooling during COVID. And um, we teach this to other teenagers um, on our experiences. And then we decided to put the book in our MI, uh, in our MIS library, which that support showed us that it's possible to um, make like this kind of change. And so we continued by um, putting the book into an, another school in Munich's library. And um, the, the book is checked out there all the time, as well as in MIS. Mm, I love it. And that's not ironic at all, Alina, honestly. It's ironic that we don't assume you all have plenty of experience more than we do. <laughs> we should be doing that all, making those assumptions all the time. Um, because as we were saying before, even a three-year-old has experiences and ideas, right? Um, they're not just an empty vessel, as Capono and I put it in our work. Um, we've already got Josh asking excitedly, how do we get a copy? Um, so I don't know if that's possible, Alina, if there's a way for other folks beyond you Europe to get access or beyond Munich to get access to that book. But there are definitely folks at what school could be that who would love um, to get to see a copy, to get to hold it physically or even just a PDF if that's available. Any other thoughts from the rest of you about how this is reflected or not inside your school day? We haven't heard from Doha in a little while. Don't know if you two want to jump in. Um, I mean, uh, I don't have uh, too much to add, but I think, yes, just when it comes to like focusing on um, the curriculum, like um, we are also a, a school that um, although we have various different programs, um, we still have a healthy IB presence. And I think in the high school level, that definitely helps to foster uh, some level of community engagement because obviously it targets um, multiple aspects, both uh, um, like creative and service related aspects of engaging with the community. And I think both are just as important uh, for different purposes. And in that sense, definitely. And it's just really spreading that sort of, again, like um, mindset, like throughout like everyone and younger students too, because essentially like the younger people get started with these sorts of um, like projects, the more, uh, they will be able to um, refine their their understanding of why they do these things. And when they reach um, the ages that we are currently at, um, they will have all the more opportunity to make a difference. So that's uh, that's what I have to say. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right, so I have another question for you all, and then I wanna make sure that we leave, if there are other questions that folks on YouTube might have, please feel free to post those in the chat and we'll take a look. Um, and Capono, of course, I wanna make sure we get your voice in here again as well. But I'm really curious, first off to ask, how have these experiences, and I know you're all different ages too, so I know that this might be framed a little differently for each of you, but how, how has this experience so far impacted what you want to study and what you want to go on to do in your lives, if it has. I don't want to cause a panic attack for the seniors. Vama, jump right in. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that this program has actually had um, a really big impact on what I want to do. So I've had um, interest in the natural sciences, so biology, chemistry for a while. But um, ideas such as change makers um, 
has actually steered me also to the more global healthcare, access to healthcare part of that. And so questions about how we can make the world better, these sorts of things have kind of shifted my attention to that as well um, in sort of a bridge between those two topics, my two interests in change making and then also in um, science. Love it. Oh, that's a great direction. So Min. Um, similarly to Vama, I feel like this entire change maker story has bridged two different things. But for me, it was rather the connection between STEM and humanities. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody, you know, we all have dreams when we we're growing up. We have a dream job and it always changes. And it, eventually it settles down as we get into um, higher levels in school. But for me, I was really... I was really confused when I had to choose my IB courses last year because, you know, as soon as you choose IB courses, you kind of choose a route to go to either STEM or to humanities. And I was really dumbstruck by that. I kind of have to choose a pathway now and the pathway I choose an IB, there's no way turning back. And honestly, mm -hmm. I was pretty panicky about it. But I think the entire Changemaker story really showed me that just because you go to STEM doesn't mean you don't have an effect on humanities. And just because you go to humanities doesn't mean you don't have an effect on STEM. And I feel like it's really opened my mind to the interconnectedness, connect, connected, yeah, I can't even talk, connectedness of everything that we do. And it kind of gave me a little bit of solace of that whatever I choose now doesn't really affect too much in the future. Yes, what I will do will affect me, but it doesn't bring as much weight as that I thought it would have been. I love that so many. And I, I can certainly speak on behalf of those of us who have recreated or reinvented ourselves multiple times uh, in further into adulthood than you might imagine too, um, that there's never a point of, I can't, you know, there's never a point at which you can't make a change too, if you start to feel a passion for something new. Who else would like to respond? Uh, Jasmine, you had raised your hand before and then let's hear from Mishi after you. Um, so I'm still a freshman and <laughs> there's <got> time. <laughs> quite a bit of time, but this change makers experience has really made me realize how much I can have an impact on this world. Not only, or just not only that I can just go for the, a job that, um, is fun and it gets me through life, but a job that actually helps people and it's made me realize that I actually have an impact on this world. And it's something that has made me want to continue in a future which can help other people and not only myself. So that's a great vision. And you, it, it'll fill in the details as you grow, right? But, but that vision of it mattering for other people is the core. That's beautifully put. Um, Mishi, what about you? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm a junior uh, as well, just like Soman, and I um, chose my courses to be more business focused as I have more of an interest in that. And through Changemakers, um, my passion sort of shifted a little bit as um, I want to more work towards um, implementing sustainable ideas and environmental focus on, in business as well, because um, as I mentioned sort of before, there's not a lot of focus currently uh, on that in the business world. There's definitely more and more uh, involvement, I think, of environmental concerns, um, but it isn't really integrated into the system itself. And I think uh, later on, I'd want to focus uh, more on that as a result of, of this experience. I love it. That's great. Anyone else? All right. Alina? Oh, one more, Alina. Um, so I think what I'm, what I'm learning through the process of organizing the Solutionary Summit are these like comp uh, competencies that you need to have a fulfilling life, like critical thinking, collaboration, um, and uh, character, for, for example, like I need to identify possible workshop leaders contact them, um, receive their proposal and give feedback on the on them and then teach them how to lead um, inspiring and impactful workshops, which are just so many important life skills that I just feel so much more stable um, and as 
as if I have much more opportunities now that I have got these um, skills on like regarding what I want to do in the future. And so I think that's something very important that we also need to um, add into the into normal school curriculums. Love it. Yes, absolutely agree. Aris? And then, Mish, and then Maxi as well, so that we can close out with a, a couple comments from each of you. Keep an eye on the time, please. All right. So um, I'll keep the, uh, this brief, but essentially, like, uh, what I like want to do again, like, it has like initially when I went into high school, I wanted to go more into like the STEM fields, but now as I've been looking at like the things, the potential for like one's career to uh, influence like the lives of other people like the communities like I've realized that like bridging uh, STEM and humanity like bringing science into a more uh, socially oriented level onto a level that is uh, people like people directed um, is something that I want to do while also keeping in mind those like insights uh, gleaned from the humanities so I know we don't have much time left, but um, those are my uh, two cents on the issue. Excellent, thank you. And Maxi. So yeah, I think these um, experiences have uh, shown me of really what are my strengths and what am I actually interested in? I've been basically able to explore areas of knowledge outside of the curriculum to see is this something that I would like to um, pursue in the future. And for me, I found that that is really the connection between having a positive impact within sustainability in connection to business management and finding out how we how businesses can manage this uh, sustainable, tra this transformation to becoming more sustainable in this critical moment of time. Excellent. Oh, I love it. And I think the world is in good hands in all all cases here. Uh, Capono, I'm so sorry. We cut, I cut off completely. No, that's good. This is a question you wanted to ask. It's all good. Uh, you guys are the highlight of this. I will actually leave you with uh, a question that I have. Um, and we won't have time to talk about it, but I'd love you guys to think about it and um, think about maybe sharing in other, in other venues. Um, I know that oftentimes people that tune in to listen to this live or asynchronously uh, want to know where they can start. What's one, what's one step uh, that I could do or our school should do to start? And I'm sure you all have some really good thoughts on it. We'll have to hold people in suspense on that, which is fine. Uh, we're going to come back in Jennifer in a second. I'm going to let you uh, thank people and close us out. Uh, but before that, I have a couple announcements. I'd like to showcase our next Big Think, which is coming up in April. Uh, we will be uh, talking uh, with Richard and Aaron about crafting and capturing authentic learning journeys. Uh, I'm really excited about this because one of the questions that we get most often uh, is how, the, how do we capture and tell the story of real authentic learning beyond the standardized test? Uh, and this is uh, going to prove to be a really exciting conversation. Um, the second thing I'd like to ask uh, is to invite you all to uh, an info session that we have today on the Masters in uh, Education in Learner-Centered Practices. We have actually a um, an info session today in just a little bit. You can learn more by going to whatschoolcouldbe.org or joining the community at community.whatschoolcouldbe.org. Um, so uh, please join us uh, both in the community and the website. And I do hope if you want to learn more about these types of practices that these amazing students have shared with us today uh, that you do check out the master's program because it is uh, everything that you'd want to be able to lead this in your school. Jennifer? Excellent. Well, thank you all. Thank you so much to each and every one of the students here today. Um, we are, as I said before, excited about um, the fact that the world is in your hands. <laughs> we see great promise there. Um, and I, again, I want to repeat that sort of last point for educators that, that the things that we need to be doing uh, to allow this to happen have to do with removing obstacles and creating intersections between our courses and these real world challenges um, that kids care about, that students care about. Um, and so thank you all for your voices and your wisdom. I agree completely. We need to get you on school advisory board around the world. Um, and we're really excited to hear from all of you about where, um, where all of this takes you in the future as well.
So thank you, everyone. Thank you to our audience. Thank you to What School Could Be um, for creating the space to hear from extraordinary students talking about really, really important work that they're getting to do in school. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.